Hey, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, we are here with you this morning. Pastor Callie gave us a call and said, hey, I think something incredible is supposed to come through you too today. So we said, okay. So here we are. Good morning, Kimmy. Good morning. I know it's going to take a second for some friends to get on. But we are here today. We're going to talk about some cool, amazing things that um, of the actual time period that we're in right now. It's called Counting the Omer, and it's so exciting for us. God knows what he's doing when he tells us to count. Hey, Karen. Hey, Rita. How are you guys doing this morning? Welcome, welcome, welcome. And then we're going to pray, and we're going to prophesy, and you're going to be so encouraged. This is such an encouraging uh, day today. This is such an encouraging time that we live in this morning, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> Pastor Donnie's still trying to wake up, <laughs> but we're going to get right into it today. Hey, Christy. Hey, Rosemary. Hey, Susan, my friend. How are you doing this morning? This is going to be a great time. I promise you're going to be so encouraged this morning. Good morning, Phil. How are you from Alaska this morning? This is called, um, this is a time of preparation. Did you know that? Isn't that awesome? It's like all through the Bible and even today. This is a super exciting period of time that we are living in right now. And this is a time when God actually has told us. This is one of the only times that he's told us to actually count the days. So we're supposed to actually be counting right now, which is awesome. And we're on day 11 of this count that God has us on. And there's a reason that he wants us to count. Because think about this, Pastor Donnie. Yes. Lean in a little bit. Whenever you are <laughs> counting the days to something special like my birthday, okay, what do you normally do? Prepare. Yeah, you prepare, huh? I and I yes. anticipate, don't I? <laughs> I anticipate what it is that is coming for my birthday or for our anniversary. And well, God knows that that's how we are. That's how he created us. And so all the way back, he knows that when we count, when we look forward to something, then that anticipation builds on the inside of us. And 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 it's like an excitement that comes. And this is the period of time that we are living in right now. It's a period of time of excitement. It's a period of time of anticipation. And I'm going to show you how cool God is and what he did in the Bible for us. Because back in Leviticus, he put this in place, this time of counting. And this is what it says. I'm going, to, I'm going to read to you from Leviticus 23. This is verse 15 and 16, and this is the amplified version. And this is what he says. He says, you shall count from the day after the Sabbath, from the day when you brought the sheaf. Now, sheaf is also translated as to the word omer. And we're going to talk about that word omer. I know this is backwards to you, but it's three letters in Hebrew. We're going to talk about what this means. Um, the wave offering. He wanted them to count. He wanted them to depend on him. He wanted them to go through this time of preparation. And he said that you shall count and there shall be seven complete Sabbaths. That means seven full weeks. You shall count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Well, the Bible calls it counting the Omar because the Omar is just simply a unit of measure for their dry uh, grain. It was a way that they tracked the grain harvest. And the only other time, and I think this is so cool, um, the only other time that the word Omar is mentioned in the Bible is when it comes to the amount of manna. So all of this has to do with preparation. All of this has to do with trusting God. He wants us to count. He wants us to anticipate. He wants us to look for him in everyday situations. So when you look at, at Omar, and I want you to look at this word right here. It means it's ayin right here, okay? This little letter right here is to see and know. So there's something that he's wanting us to see, and there's something that he's wanting us to know. And during this period of time right now, because he wants us to see and he wants us to know what is going to bring forth. That's what this letter means right here. The prince, who is Jesus. He wants us to see and know. He says, I want you to look forward, my people. There is something that I am doing right now. There is something that I am bringing forth. There's a connection that's coming that is just going to blow your mind. But it's even deeper than that because when you look at this letter right here, I and, and you look at it, it means number 70. That's perfect spiritual order. So in your houses right now, ladies, what he's doing is he's bringing forth a perfect spiritual order and he's going to bring it forth with spiritual power and he's going to bring it forth with significance. These are days of significance that we are living in right now. Then when you look at this little letter right here, Mim, that's the number 40. Now I know 40 is a big deal right now, okay? We're going through 49 days of counting to the 50th, but there's something that's happening during these first 40 days. And he even tells us in this word, Omar, right here. He says, you know what? There's trials and there's testimonies. 
But these trials, they're an action of grace. What they're doing is it's a purging on the inside of us. He's, he's revealing what's on the inside of us. And all he wants us to do is work with him with what he brings forth because he is right smack in the midst of all that. And then this letter right here, Resh, it also means the number 200. He wants to reveal to us by going through, by seeing and knowing this complete, perfect spiritual order, all these things that he's bringing forth right now. He wants us to know and understand the sufficiency of Jesus to accomplish in us what we are unable to do. And so during this time, ladies, what he is doing is he is revealing to us himself. It is so awesome and so amazing. And this counting, it started the day of Passover, the, the second day of Passover on April 16th that night. We started this 49-day count looking up to 50. Now, you know what the 50th day is? It's Pentecost. Woohoo! The Bible calls it Shavuot. It's Pentecost. And that's what is happening on that 50th day. So what he's trying to get us to do is to get ready to receive this incredible power that he's about to bring forth. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. It's so awesome. Okay, so it gets even awesomer. So we're, we're currently on day 11 of this count, okay? So we're going to break this count down. We're only going to talk about the first 40 days today because I want you to really see this because there's actually phases. There's 40 days, then there's nine days. And then there's that 50th day right there, which is Pentecost, which absolutely felt, that's right, fire. So the 40-day pattern, you know that it occurs a billion times in the Bible. We've seen it. You know that Moses, when he was called to lead the Exodus, he had to go for 40 years and go herd sheep in the wilderness. Right. But you know what? That wasn't a time that was wasted. That was a time of preparation. preparation. Right. It was preparation. So what we're going through right now is a time of preparation. Then, you know, the Israelites, they spent 40 years wandering around in the, in the wilderness. But that was preparation time for them. That was like a school, a hardcore school. That's when God revealed to them three of his covenant names, that he is their protector, that he is their provider, and that he is their healer. So expect that, ladies, during this period of time right now, God is revealing to you these three covenant names of his during this period of time. He is Nisi, he is Rapha, and he is... What was the last one? Jaira. <laughs> <laughs> he is provider. He is gyro right there. Okay, so then there's another 40-day period of time. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. I remember when he came down with his tablets. His only job during that time was just to obey God, just to go up the mountain. And so we have to work with what Holy Spirit's telling us. And then Jesus even spent 40 days in the wilderness before he started his earthly ministry. And you know how he responded to every trial, to every temptation? The word the with the word of the Lord. And so that's what God is trying to do in us right now. So then... Fast forward to the New Testament and check this out. Whenever God instated the Omer count, he knew that was going to occur during that 40-day period of time when Jesus was resurrected. When Jesus was walking around on the earth after resurrection before he ascended into heaven, he knew that. He knew that. And so I want you to check out and see what Jesus' disciples were doing and what Jesus did during this exact time. Remember, he's... He, he died, he was in the grave, and then he resurrected. They were in freak out mode. They weren't exactly sure what was going on. They really didn't know what to do. So I'm going to give you some scriptures and you can look them up later. I'm not going to read the whole scripture passage to you this morning because we want to get to praying and prophesying. But I want you to look at these scriptures, okay? Look at John 20, verse 11 through 18. This is when Mary goes to the tomb and she's sitting out there weeping and she wanted, she wanted to go and anoint his body. And all of a sudden, guess what? You can read it in the scripture. This is what it says. She turned around and Jesus was standing there. Jesus came to her. Jesus pursued her during this exact period of time. That's what happened. Then I want you to read this. Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Matthew 28, 16 through 20. This is when he had told the 11 disciples, he said, go to Galilee, go sit right there. And, th and they saw him. He came to them. He pursued them. That's what uh, verse 18 says. Jesus came to them. That's what he's doing right now. Then Luke 24. You can read the whole entire thing, but this is this is the walk to Emmaus. And you can you can look as they're walking. The Bible says Jesus himself came up and walked among them. All of this is happening during this 40-day time. Jesus is pursuing them. Say that with me, ladies. Jesus is pursuing me. Jesus is pursuing my family. Jesus is pursuing those people that I'm praying for. Jesus is pursuing my neighbors. Jesus is pursuing all all of us right now. It's a big, huge time. Look at Mark 16, 14. This is when they were just sitting down eating. 
They were just eating, doing their normal everyday thing. And Jesus was pursuing them. Then in John 20, 24 through 28, that's when the, you get the story of the doubting Thomas thing. And it says Jesus even came through the locked door. Y'all, that's how intense he pursues us. He comes through places that we have considered locked off. And he says, you know what? I'm pursuing you in that locked off place today. So all those places of maybe wounds, because Thomas was a doubter at that point in time, all those places of hurt and pain, Jesus is pursuing you in those places right now during this period of time in order to heal them, in order to prepare you for what is coming because there's a harvest that's coming and there is power that's coming and it's an intense time right now for us. Then he even pursued them. You can check out this one too. John 21, one through seven, they were fishing and Jesus came up to them. Hey, hey, throw it on the other side. And whenever they realized, Simon Peter, whenever he realized who it was, it says he took his coat, he bound it around him, he jumped into the water, and he went after Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be doing there in this time right now. All they were doing was going about their normal lives as usual. But wherever they went, whatever they were doing, Jesus kept revealing himself to them. And that's what he's doing for us right now. We just have to work with him. We just have to notice him. We just have to get our mindset geared toward, I'm looking for Jesus in everything because he's right there. He was strengthening their faith. And ladies, that's what he's doing right now. He's strengthening your faith. He's opening your eyes. He's giving you a new understanding of himself and of the scriptures. When you open that Bible this morning and you start reading, the scriptures are going to jump off the page to you. That's how much he's pursuing you. He's giving you brand new insight. And the awesome, most amazing thing is that he doesn't require anything of us during this time except for the fact that we anticipate, we count, we look for him. We're going about our normal lives. God is pursuing them. He is revealing himself to us. All we got to do is cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Just look for him. He can be there in a blade of grass that you see poking up through the concrete. He's going to be there in every situation that you're in. Just your normal, everyday life. That's how good our God is. Just cooperate him, with him. Watch for new insight. Watch for revelation from God as you go about your normal lives, ladies. Because during this period of time, this 40 days, he is preparing us for the harvest. Then the, ninth, the, the next nine days, whew, that's a period of waiting in the upper room. For what? For the power that's coming. Mm -hmm. There's harvest that's coming, ladies, and we can't miss it. We got to be in tune with what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. And he's telling us to anticipate right now. He's telling Thank us to watch Spirit. for him right now. And that's Thank what we're Holy doing. Spirit. That's what we're doing. Isn't that awesome? That's good, huh? I know. <laughs> Woohoo! Let's he's pray good. this morning. Yes. I got, uh, let's pray that uh, the Spirit of the Lord, that people would encounter yes. Jesus. Yes. That people would encounter the Spirit of the Lord during this time. Yes. Let's pray and then we're going to prophesy a little bit. Father, we just thank you this morning. Yes, we do. For your incredible presence, for your abiding presence, Lord, right yes. now. Lord, I just pray your presence fall fresh in yes. every home, yes. in every church, Father God, that's represented, Lord, in these ladies' lives that are online right now. Lord, let them feel your yes. tangible presence right now god right now lord holy ghost fall fresh fall fresh upon him uh, upon them this morning god i know there's ladies watching right now that uh maybe you're dealing with uh some oppression or depression and we just bind those oppressing spirits right now in the name of jesus i bind the spirit of depression right now in the name of jesus maybe you know someone that's dealing with depression god we take authority and we decree and declare that the blood of Jesus covers them now and that joy yes. is filling their heart and their minds right now yeah, in the name you. of Jesus. Let Father, we just pray for loved ones yes. right now, fathers, brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles, God, Lord, that do not know you. Maybe yes. some that have walked away from you, God. Lord, we know that you are faithful and that your yeah. arm is not short, God. So, Lord, we just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would yes. begin to brood over those yes. uh, individuals right now, those loved ones, Father, co-workers, uh, neighbors, as Pastor Jessica said, those in our circle of yes. influence, Father God. Holy Spirit, that you would begin to fall fresh upon them, begin to brood over them. Lord, we 
pray for God encounters. Yes. God encounters. Holy Ghost encounters that you would begin to woo their hearts, Lord, that you would begin to turn stony hearts into hearts of flesh, Father yes. God. Lord, that you would reveal yourself Reveal yourself to, to humanity, God. You veal, reveal yourself in the earth to yes. humankind, Father God. Reveal yourself, Holy Ghost, yes. in, the in, the in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that, yes. that people will find you in their, their darkest hours, even right now, Father God, uh, particularly, Father, those that are dealing with fear. Maybe yes. you're watching this morning and you're dealing with, with fear, fear of the future. You know, COVID, they, you watch the news and, and COVID's on in China and it's, it's, they're trying to tell us that it's resurging. And we just rebuke that in the name of Jesus and we bind up that spirit of infirmity yes. that is trying to create fear in the earth. And if you're dealing with fear, we bind that we bind spirit it, of yes. fear this morning yes. in the name of Jesus and we yes. loose the Holy Ghost and joy yes. and wisdom into your life yes. this, morning. this morning. Thank you, Father. You know, uh, Pastor Ryan, this is the month of Judah. We're coming to the end of it, but this is the month where um, he tells us to go first in praise, to go first in praise. And uh, the song that keeps coming to me, and you know I can't sing it, but it's Welcome Holy Spirit. So I think you're supposed to sing that song over them. Let's all just join in together. Um, we are in your presence. You, Jesus. Fill us with your power. Live inside of us. Yeah. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Yes, Lord. Live inside of me. You're the living water. Never drying fountain, comforter and counselor, live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Father, I thank you for a fresh infilling yes. of your Holy Spirit. Yes. I thank you for your peace. Yes. Right, that, right, right now. now, Lord, that yes. is filling the atmosphere. Yes. Your peace that passes all earthly understanding, yes, God. All of it. Your peace that is moving over our souls right now. Ladies, yes. just lift your hands right where you're at. Just lift your yes. hands and just receive the peace yeah. of the Holy Spirit passing over your soul right yes. now. There's someone named Linda. I feel like Linda is, you're dealing with anxiety. And I just speak to that anxiety right now. And I tell it to leave you. Yes. You're covered in the blood of Jesus. Yes, you are. Anxiety has to go. In the name of Jesus, I feel like maybe it's a generational thing that your family's yes. dealt with. And I break yes. that generational uh, spirit yes. that has visited you in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that you are walking yes. forward, yes. moving forward in your life, Linda. Anxiety free, filled with yes. the Holy Ghost and joy and tenacity yes to move forward in the things of god yes. i believe there's there's several of you that you've allowed anxiety to stop you from doing what god's told you to do and we break that we bind that spirit yeah. now in the name yes. of jesus and we loose the holy ghost the spirit of movement the spirit of momentum yes the sp spirit of joy and wisdom to begin to operate in your life right now. Yes. I want to stop for a minute. Let's, um, I want us to pray that the Spirit of God, um, as Jesus went through the door, that the Spirit of God would break through hard places, yes. break through locked doors, yeah. break through walls 
that people have set, uh, set up. Many of you uh, in your own life, you know that there have been times in your life where you built walls around yourself to protect yourself. Uh, maybe you experienced some type of hurt or a bad relationship or something went on at church. And so we want to pray right now. Yeah. Father, we thank just you, thank Lord. you now in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that you are moving through the locked yes. places, the yes. hardest cases, the hardest places. Mm -hmm. I hear the name Joel right now. I don't know if that's a husband or a son or maybe a nephew or a loved one or a coworker, but I hear right now that the Spirit of the Lord is breaking through right now the walls that Joel has built around him. There's a lot of hurt and confusion and we bind uh, those demonic spirits right yes. now. We bind uh, a lying spirit yes. now in the name of Jesus, and we decree and declare that Joel is going to hear the word of the Lord. Yes. He's going to experience uh, the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray even right now, with uh, Joel, wherever you're at, that the Spirit of God is breaking through the hardness of your heart, and your heart yes, is becoming yes, a heart yes. of flesh in the name of Jesus, that you are returning. Joel, you've known the love of the Father. You've known the power of the Holy Spirit. And you let circumstances and people uh, drive you out of the house of God. I decree and declare that, Joel, you're returning to the house of God in repentance. There is no condemnation now in Christ Jesus. And you're going to pick up where you left off stronger yes. and faster yes. in the Holy yes. Ghost yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Ladies, I wanted to uh, just tell you what I hear in the Spirit. I was hearing this before Pastor Jessica uh, began to speak, that it's time for the church. I want to speak to the church, maybe some pastors, and we are the church, so I'm speaking to you, uh, to begin to look for Jesus. Yeah. Look for Jesus. Uh, set your eyes on Jesus. Set the table, if you will, yeah. for Jesus. Set the atmosphere for Jesus because Jesus is moving in the church. Yes, I believe that um, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that uh, no longer is he going to tolerate uh, spectators, mm -hmm. no longer... Um, no longer is the church to be an audience. We've replaced disciples with an audience. Yeah. We've replaced um, worship with entertainment. God is moving in the church, and I, I strongly believe that uh, the churches that are out there entertaining, the churches whose focus is on uh, numbers or their focus is on uh, what, how pleasurable the experience can be uh, in church or begin, begin to fall away. And I believe the spirit of the Lord is revealing the heart of the church, yeah. even the heart of the pastor, if you'll allow me to go that far. Yeah. And um, those pastors and churches are going to begin to fall away. We're already seeing it. Um, if you just look around uh, throughout the world at what hap is what is happening um, to churches. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is reminding us that He, during this time, is the provision for yeah. the church. Yeah. He is the provision, not numbers. You know, we like to say uh, as pastors, and we're pastors, that if you get over 500 people, that your the tithe and offering begins to double and, and triple. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, uh, no longer are you to speak in such terms because you're prophesying yeah. over the church and that we're to, we're to begin to look to him for the provision and it's supernatural provision. I believe the Lord is about to begin to do unprecedented miracles yeah. in the church, unprecedented uh, physical miracles and financial miracles, uh, not only for churches and pastors, but for the people in the church. Pastor Jessica talked about perfect spiritual order, and I believe the Spirit of the Lord is saying He is establishing and wants yes. to establish for those that will lift up holy hands and yeah. begin to climb the holy mountain. Uh, 
Can I read that scripture to you right now? It's from the Message Bible, and this is what the Lord gave me before we began uh, to start. It says, this is Psalm 24, 3 through 4. It says, who can climb Mount God? Who can scale the holy north face? Only the clean-handed, only the pure-hearted, men who won't cheat, women who won't seduce. God is at their side. With God's help, they make it. This, Jacob, is what happens to God-seekers, God-questers. Wake up, you sleepy-headed city. Wake up, you sleepy-headed people. King Glory is ready to enter. Who is the king of glory? God armed and battle ready. Wake up, you sleepy-head city. Wake up, you sleepy-head people. King Glory is ready to enter. Who is this King Glory? God of the angel armies. He is the King Glory. I believe that as the church... We've tolerated and allowed uh, Jezebel and Ahab. We've tolerated uh, pastors and teachers and 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 preachers and and men and women um, to seduce the church, to seduce congregations. I know this is heavy right now. This is what I just feel the Spirit of God is saying. Uh, men who cheat and women who seduce, and they've lulled the church into a place of complacency. Yeah. And we're seeing these things being revealed yeah. in, in the earth because uh, God is not going to tolerate this anymore because God is preparing the church for what is coming. Yeah. And God is wanting to fill the church with unprecedented Power, power yeah. unprecedented power. And what the Spirit of God is doing right now is He is revealing what is happening uh, in the church. God is yeah. saying, "Get ready, get ready, get ready." Yeah. Uh, we're the yeah. church, God. We're uh, guys. We're responsible. And it even goes back to this word Oma right here because this letter Mem right here, you can either bring forth waters of confusion and chaos or you can bring forth his waters of peace. It's our choice. We have to work with God. We have to work with the Holy Spirit right now, which is exactly what you're saying. He is revealing to us because he's preparing us for the harvest and for right. power. If we don't go through the preparation, the harvest is going to be wasted. You know what I mean? Like it's right. not going to be gathered because we, his body, are not ready. We're not prepared. We have to work for him, with him. We have to understand what it is that God is telling us to do, to either take things out and, or put things back in. Right. Because the power is coming. Right. Because he's preparing us. He is. It's a perfect spiritual order what he's, he's doing He's preparing right us. Now. And listen, the enemy's done, Satan has done everything yeah. that he can do to twist and pervert yeah. 